Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha Television. I am Akhilesh Suman and you are watching Special Report. We are at Tinmurti Haifa Chowk. India and Israel are celebrating 100th anniversary of Haifa Day, that is on 23rd September. In next half an hour, we will show you the story of Haifa and we will also share the perspectives on India-Israel relationship that I call it as Haifa spirit. in Israel actually celebrate Haifa victory all through the month of September. This also coincides with the New Year of Jews. As relations between India and Israel grow by every passing day, the intensity of celebration has also increased. This year on the 6th of September, Indian ambassador in Israel also participated in the celebration in the city of Haifa. Indian troops fought away from their land but decided that they will give it their best and help liberate the city. So it's a very special day and we came here to honor the soldiers, the Indian soldiers who laid down their lives to liberate the city. So we celebrated uh, in the beginning of the month. Uh, this is the month of Jewish holidays. So we started the month with the celebration of Haifa Day. Uh, we had a beautiful ceremony on uh, Mount Carmel uh, in the cemetery in the presence of Ambassador Kapoor. Uh, that presented the government of India. Right. Uh, we had a representative from both um, Mysore and Jodhpur. Uh, we had official representative of the government of Israel and the mayor of Haifa, okay. and all commemorated uh, in a beautiful ceremony. The in, Haifa itself. in Haifa itself. In the year 2017, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had also visited the place on his first ever visit to Israel. And he described Haifa as a place that glues India and Israel through memories and to the dreams. Later in 2018, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also came to India and both leaders went to Haifa Square together right from the airport itself. We receive you with open arms. We love India. We admire your culture. We admire your history, your democracy, your commitment to progress. Shalom, Lekram, Anisemya, Mayod, Lehiat Po. It is my singular honor to be the first ever Prime Minister of India to undertake this groundbreaking visit to Israel. A war cemetery was constructed by the British in honour and memory of those who had fallen in the war in the city of Haifa. You can see the names and signs of Indians on these plaques. They were Indian soldiers who were killed in Haifa battle. But their sacrifices were not in vain. I 
I took a, some interest, uh, particularly in uh, the year uh, 2000, when um, Honorable External Affairs Minister Sri Jaswant Singh okay. uh, came to Israel. He was particularly keen on Haifa, the historical connection, All right. because his uncle was actually in the Jodhpur Lancers, right. who liberated Haifa on 23rd September 1918. They won the Haifa battle by defeating the mighty Ottoman army. And the day of September 23, 1918 was crucial in the history of the First World War as the 15th Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade marched to capture Haifa with traditional weapons of India. The brigade comprised of lancers from the regiments of Jodhpur, Hyderabad and Mysore, the then existing princely states under British rule. The brave soldiers of India fiercely attacked the positions held by the Ottoman Turks in and around Haifa. Eventually, the Indian Cavalry Brigades liberated Haifa city from the clutches of the Turkish-German forces. Haifa was thus freed from the Turkish control of almost four centuries. This is a very interesting story, which I think is not known to many Indians, right. but uh, it's being learned in every school in Haifa. Okay. So, in World War I, uh, the British uh, tried to take over the... the then Palestine, the country of uh, Israel, uh, with joint forces with the Australian and New Zealand. And they had uh, soldiers from uh, India, Indian Army. Uh, Indian Army, at that time uh, stationed uh, in Israel. The victory was celebrated back in India too. This is Tinmurti Square, located in the heart of the national capital of India. It is situated here since 1922, but hardly anyone notices what it is all about. Actually, it is a structure erected as a mark of respect to those Indian soldiers belonging to three princely states of Jodhpur, Hyderabad and Mysore. You can see Captain Aman Singh, Captain Anup Singh and Major Dalpat Singh, who are the leaders of the Battle of Haifa, and of the soldiers who had served during the World War I under British Indian Army near the present Gaza Strip. Thanks to the bravery, you, you read the stories of the people that fought this, the heart of Haifa, and then General Singh, and you see their uh, personal sacrifice and their bravery and how they uh, devoted themselves for this cause, uh, and they freed the city. The year of 1918, the First World War was in full blow. Allied forces led by the British Army were in the endeavour of capturing Haifa as it was a strategic supply base and port city of the rival Ottoman Turks. It was connected with rail, road and harbour link and so very important. I think that was a key for all of Israel to okay. be out of the British uh, uh, occupation, uh, we need, uh, out of the Ottoman occupation. Okay. We need to remember that uh, Israel is <laughs> extremely small, not like India, uh, and especially on that time we're speaking about maybe 400 kilometers right. from north to south. So mm. obviously without Haifa, they mm. would never take control over, uh, uh, over Israel. The British wouldn't be able to take control. What was so special about the victory was that the Indian soldiers were armed with lances, spears and swords on horseback. But on the other side, the Turks were equipped with artillery and machine guns. The Indian troops fought with remarkable valor and pushed the Ottomans to defeat. This was the last cavalry war of eminence. Machine gun bullets fired over and over again failed to stop the galloping horses, even though many of them succumbed afterwards to their injuries. For many years, they couldn't uh, occupy Haifa. From mm. it, because it's a mountain, because it's near the beach, because it's so important. It also was considered to be a very hard fight. Mm. No one thought uh, at the time that uh, anyone could win this fight fight in a few hours, mm. uh, but the Indian forces came and they managed in very short time, less than a day, to conquer the old city and free it from the Ottoman Empire. The Indian soldiers also captured 1,350 German and Ottoman prisoners, including two German officers, 35 Ottoman officers, 17 artillery guns and 11 machine guns. Eight Indian soldiers died in this operation with 34 wounded and 60 horses killed and 83 horses injured. Who did it were soldiers from the Indian regime 
regiment uh, within the British Army. And there is one person by the name of Singh, he was a major, he was a hero who freed Haifa. And this has to be a very significant part in the history of Haifa. The Indian Bravehearts won despite robust defence put forth by the Ottoman Turks and German coalition. Turkish guns and artillery had covered almost every part of the ways leading to Haifa town. But our brave soldiers defeated all the war strategies of the opponents. Now people in Haifa feel obliged to India for the liberation of Haifa that came eventually to Israel. The youngsters in Israel are uh, growing up on the basis of India because it's now a habit that once you finish the army service you immediately go to India and you wander around India which is a very big uh, and a diverse uh, country for a year at least. Even my daughters did it and in my uh, family uh, there is a profound love towards India. Haifa, after that period, became part of the British colony. The British developed Haifa as a modern city with best infrastructure. Jews, Baha'is and Arabs were the major population living in Haifa at the time. However, after the Second World War, Haifa became part of Israel as a result of declaration of establishment of the State of Israel on the 14th of May 1948. Haifa is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. A significant amount of Indian coming as tourists. We would like to collaborate on the basis of high tech because we are a center of high tech. And I pray to God that I'll succeed to bring a university from India to open up a branch in Haifa. Haifa has turned into Israel's third largest city after Tel Aviv and Jerusalem and it has a population of around 2,81,087. Because of its mixed demography, Haifa is considered a place of peaceful coexistence between Arabs and Jews resembling India's culture of unity in diversity. Haifa is one of the most special cities in Israel. Um, it's very Asian yeah. um, and it's um, a place where Jews and Arabs, uh, Baha'i, Druze live together. Historically. Uh, historically. Yeah. Uh, for many, many years, uh, you have their uh, Jewish residents that never left uh, the state of Israel. You have the Arab residents. Uh, you have the Christian residents. Uh, since it was a port city from very ancient times, mm. uh, always the new residents uh, that came wanted to live near the beach and wanted to have an access to water. Yeah. Uh, we saw it in, with the Ottoman Empire, with the British Empire, and before that with the Crusades. Right. Um, so it, it became a very important port city. Uh, for strategic reasons and also cultural reasons, mm. uh, and it's, it is until today. Haifa is now a living symbol of the India-Israel connect. The story of Haifa and the valor of Indian soldiers are part of the formal syllabus of schools in Israel. Haifa is a touching story for Israelis and Indians also feel proud about it. Let's see what is the Indian perspective about Haifa and how India sees the future of India-Israel relationship in the mirror of Haifa. There can be no better person than Mr. Ranjan Mathai who was ambassador in Israel and actually the third ambassador in Israel from India after we had full-fledged diplomatic relations and he also became the Foreign Secretary. Ambassador Mathai, uh, when you were ambassador in Israel, how was the situation of the relationship between the two countries? It was a good relationship. When I reached there in 98, our trade was building up. Mm. We had a good people-to-people -people relationship, good political relations. And uh, we had begun to make very major forward steps in the defense relationship. Right. But the emphasis was on science and technology, education, tourism, travel, building up relationships after a long time. Mm. 
But when you were there, how did you remember Haifa issue? Because Haifa was one of the issues between the two countries uh, which uh, um, used to be celebrated a lot. So, how, what was the situation that time? How people of Israel were seeing Haifa that time? Well, Haifa, as you know, is the major port of Israel and uh, a lot of our trade came through there. Uh, it has a historical connection right. for India, uh, not only in recent times, and I'll come to that, but from very ancient times, because trading used to take place from Haifa to southern India in prehistory, I mean in ancient times. They right. say even in, say, you know, 1000 BC. Oh. Uh, during King Solomon's time. Right. Generally, there is a feeling about Israelis that they, they, are, they are very tough, we are very rude, we are very hard. But what was your experience when you were dealing with uh, Israelis? Because you told that more than eight chief ministers had interest. That means there was some interest in India, but what was interest in Israel? You know, it's very interesting. When Israel, uh, Israeli young people uh, they have to do compulsory military service. Right. When they finish compulsory military service, it's famous that before starting any other activity, whether studies or work, they like to take about a year doing nothing or eight months having relaxation and so on. And they used to traditionally like to go far away. They used to go to Latin America. Some used to come to Nepal and so on. Very soon after we developed a relationship, okay. a strong link has built up with these young people coming and living in India yeah. for months together, traveling all over our country, sometimes by train in ordinary circumstances. They go to Manali, Goa, mm. Kerala, all over the country. So they, they really like India. They like Indian uh, classical music, classical traditions. Uh, they enjoy very much uh, Indian food right. when they have a chance to eat it, uh, though of course not very spicy. And I think on the whole there is a very strong belief that India is a country with whom uh, Israel can build a very strong relationship in the future among people to people. Uh, they used to feel that you know you really relax when you head out from the east, you take a plane and go, you start relaxing when you reach India. You know, okay. till then all the other countries are, it's a very difficult relationship with the entire Israel. rest of the Middle East. This was how it was in those days. Okay. Uh, India, they feel at home, they feel relaxed, they feel this is an easy place, that we can get on well. uh, We had very strong uh, sentiment about uh, Palestine and still Israelis felt very easy in India. So, uh, how, how could India manage I think manage it's, it? it's the strength of the people to people tie. Right. Uh, one other thing which is often mentioned, and I have personal experience of this, uh, an Indian uh, Jewish lady who had gone and settled in Israel yeah. uh, 40 years before I reached there, she told me that there was a gathering in her small village, kibbutz as in yeah. those days, and they were all telling stories about the countries from where they came. Okay. And she said, I was the only one, only one who came from a country where in all of history there has not been any anti-Jewish sentiment. Right. And she said, I was so proud to say this. I was a proud to be an Indian and an Israeli at the same time. Israelis are aware of that, that in historical times, Jewish people have come, lived in our country. They've become more Indian. Mm. Now some of them have gone back to Israel and they are a kind of permanent link right. between our two countries. They have. PIO status in our country. So I think there is a strong sense of friendship. So you were ambassador at a time when I think that uh, Kargil was also there going on. So how Israel responded uh, on the issue of Kargil and how uh, India-Israel came closer on this issue? I think yes, Kargil was a major turning point in our defense technology relationship. Uh, the Israelis were very forthcoming. They had absolutely no hesitation mm. in saying, if we can be of assistance in boosting your defense technology to take care of the issues which had arisen, then we will do it. Right. And they had sanction from the highest level. Okay. They not only came across with certain very crucial technologies, they actually delivered them in India okay. to us. 
so that uh, I mean one is well known the famous cables for the lightning pods okay. which which the Mirage aircraft were targeting certain positions on the hills okay. uh, that those crucial bits of technology Th that uh, was immediately given to immediately us immediately given no hesitation ah. and whatever else they had they were willing to share with us I think uh, it helped boost the confidence of our uh, armed forces and our system as such in the fact that Israel would be a reliable defense partner under all circumstances. So it was a buyer-seller relationship type or was it something different than just a buyer-seller relationship? Because in defense we know that a huge amount of money is involved. So what you felt about Israel then when they helped us in Kargil war? The Israelis have been open to sharing with us technology. They have been open to sharing with us systems which almost nobody else in the world is able to do. And they have demonstrated a reliability mm. that this uh, technology supply will not be ever broken, that it will continue under all circumstances and that it is designed in a way that our armed forces can quickly pick it up, use it and have it uh, available for uh, our defense. Israelis actually get emotional about India when they recount the story of Haifa. And so, they have perspective about India-Israel relations of the future. Let's hear what is that perspective. No one can tell me better on this issue than Maya Kadosh the charity affairs of Embassy of Israel in India. If you consider Haifa was so important for Israel and uh, India contributed to it, but uh, only I think uh, when Benjamin Netanyahu came to India, then only we came to know about that how Haifa was important for both the countries because there is a teen murti here and very few people knew that what this teen murti is all about. So, so now uh, if you think beyond Haifa, then how India-Israel relations are going on? So I think this is a symbol of how the Israel-India relations went on. For Israel, Haifa and the Indian contribution to Haifa was always mentioned in okay. our books, in our education system. We have over 900 uh, Indian soldiers either buried or terminated in Israel. Okay. We always took care of their grave, of the place they are honored. Uh, and people in Israel knew about it. Okay. Now, 25 years ago, we started to have uh, uh, bilateral relations. And I think 10 years later, the embassy in Israel took the initiative to start these ceremonies, oh. which then become more known also to people in India. Okay. I think what uh, Prime Minister Modi did, like in any other field with the Indian-Israel uh, relation, is it, he took it forward. He took it to be very public. Okay. He was uh, saying, this is the time to be open about our relations with Israel. This is time to be proud about our relations with Israel. And 100 years ago, that was one of the first modern day right. uh, connection between India and Israel. So I think the story of Haifa reflects very well the change we had in our relations. You right. know, first we had diplomatic relations and they weren't so public. Mm. And then it became so public and, uh, and, and based on cultural understanding and honoring each other. Yeah. So uh, as far as scientifically, artificial intelligence, Israel has also developed very well. So is there any cooperation in these areas? This is a v it's an area of interest for both sides, but I must say it's very young, both in Israel and in India. Yeah. Uh, we definitely have scientists working together. We have now the um, new research fund uh, that was signed under the two prime minister leadership. Uh, this is one of the topics that researchers can come with ideas of joint projects. Uh, but I, I think it's too soon yet to say, oh, this project is already in place. We are talking about it. There's a lot of interest in both sides, but I think it's very early for all the world okay. to come with solutions. And uh, terrorism is also one of the issues that uh, India is concerned about. And Israel also had been facing terrorism for a long time. So what type of cooperation we are having in the field of counterterrorism? First of all, I think the most important is we have an open dialogue. Mm. Uh, when it comes to terrorism, I think Israel and India both understand the dangers of state-sponsored terrorism. Uh, we can speak about it openly. 
uh, we can decide together how we are going to, to tackle some of these problems. Uh, we also deal, uh, as I said, with the issue of uh, terrorists using the net. Um, we share with India a lot of our knowledge. Unfortunately, Israel has an experience that no, no other country wants to right, have, right. Uh, which makes us good, you know, like at what we are doing. The experience, together with the startups, brought us to a level of knowledge of how to deal with terrorism mm. and that we're happy to share with, with partners and friends. Okay, and so now there is a direct fight between India and Israel. Mm -hmm. So is it adding to the uh, uh, tourism sector? Of course, yeah. Uh, we have more tourists, more business people. It's easy to fly. Yeah. Uh, both sides. Uh, I think we started with three flights from a, a week, and now we're already in four flights a week, and we hope to have more flights coming soon. Uh, we opened two new visa centers okay. just to help uh, Indians to obtain visa to, to Israel and go easily wherever they live. So we have one in Hyderabad and one in Kolkata. Mm on top of what we already had. Uh, and we're glad to see that Indian love to, suddenly, you know, when it's just six, seven hours away, people go for the weekend or for a short trip and it's, it's great. Oh, it's going, it's going on very going well. Going on very well. well. And you are experiencing Indians going, not creating any problem there? Of course not. <laughs> no, Indians loved in Israel. I think because we have so many young Israelis, about 60 to 70,000 young Israelis a year coming to visit India. Yeah, right. Almost every Israeli you meet in uh, Israel have been visited uh, India and had the best time of his life. Because that's, you know, the time before you study, before you have any commitment. Okay. So all their good memories in life connected to India. So yeah. when Indians go to Israel, and I'm sure you experienced it yourself, everyone here, oh, you're from India. That's so wonderful. When I've been to India, I love your food, I love your culture, I love the smile of the people. All right. So, yeah, is, uh, Indians are well received. In so, Indian students are crazy about going abroad and studying abroad. So, how uh, price-wise, how Israel is there as far as educational fees and other expenses are concerned? It's actually cheaper, much cheaper than the, new, than the U.S. Ah. Uh, because uh, all... Almost all universities in Israel are owned by the government. Uh, we have uh, good exchange programs okay. that the uh, Indian student can take advantage of. Um, I think it's equal or a bit less than the European universities. And uh, language is English? Language is English. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Maya Kadosh. Mm -hmm. Excellency, the charge affairs of the Embassy of Israel in India. So this is the Hi-Fi spirit, implementation of commitments, quick delivery of goods and services, and maintaining the relationship without any political hiccups. That's all in this special report today. Thanks for watching Raj Sabha Television.